Hello. I've got a lovely story to read to you today. It's called The Selfish Giant. It was written by Oscar Wilde in 1888. That's 130 something years ago. It's a long time ago, but it isn't a traditional tale because we know the name of the person who wrote the story. It's been told by different people over the years, but it isn't a traditional tale, okay? And it's all about a very selfish giant, exactly as the title says. Now, selfish means you're mean and you don't like sharing. And a giant, you probably know, is someone exceptionally tall, really, really massively taller than normal human beings. But there aren't really giants in the world. There are very, very tall people. But giants are, well, you can see in the picture how much bigger the giant is to the children in the pictures. So let's see what it's all about. It's actually got a bit of a sort of moral tale, they call them. It means you can learn something about human beings and how human beings can sometimes forget how to do their best or be their best. So let's see. Every afternoon as they were coming home from school, the children used to go and play in the giant's garden. It was a large and lovely garden with soft green grass. Here and there over the grass stood beautiful flowers like stars and there were 12 peach trees that in the springtime broke out into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl and in the autumn bore rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games just to listen to them. So a very, very special garden. You can see, look, a box with puppets in, but it's enormous because they must be the puppets that belong to the giant. One day, the giant who'd been away came back. Look, you see, tiny the children are compared to the giant. What are you doing here? He cried in a very loud voice. And the children were so frightened, they ran away. My garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that. And I will allow nobody to play in it but myself. So he built a high wall all around it and put up a notice board. Look. And the notice board said trespassers will be prosecuted. That means anybody who tried to get into his garden would be arrested by a policeman. Oh dear, oh dear. And you can see how high the wall is that he's built. So nobody, none of the children can get in. Spring came, I think he must have come back. Can you, well, you, what time of year do you think he arrived back? I, th I agree, I think it looks like autumn because it's all golden and brown and the leaves are starting to fall off the trees, aren't they? Most of the trees are almost completely bare of leaves. Anyway, spring came and all over the country, there were little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant, it was still winter. The birds did not care to sing in it as there were no children and the trees forgot to blossom. Doesn't it look sad? The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried, so we can live here all year round. The snow covered up the grass and the frost painted all the trees silver. And then they invited the north wind to stay with them. And he came. Oh, he roared around the garden. Oh, look at that. Isn't that an incredible image? This is the wind. He roared all day about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. 
This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask the hail on a visit. Hail is huge, big, rock-like boulders of frozen water. So ice, but huge, huge boulders. So the hail came and crashed down into the garden. Look, this is the hail here, can you see? I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant as he sat and looked out at his cold white garden. I hope there'll be a change in the weather. But the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden in the land, but to the giant's garden, she gave none. He is too selfish, she said. So it was always winter in the giant's garden. Look at that illustration, isn't that amazing? Always winter there and the north wind and the hail and the frost and the snow danced through the trees. The giant's lying in his bed and look, Who's peering through the window? It's winter. Oh dear. One morning the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It was really only a little bird, a linnet, singing outside his window, but it was so long since he had heard a bird sing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful sound in the world. Then the hail stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaring and a delicious perfume came to him through the open window. I believe spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? he saw a most wonderful sight. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in and they were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child. And the trees were so glad to have the children back again that they had covered themselves with blossoms and were waving their arms gently above the children's heads. The giant is seeing all this see the garden starting to come back to life and the little children who'd crept in through the hole. Only in one water, it was one corner, it was still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden and in it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree and he was wandering all around it, crying bitterly. The poor tree was still quite covered with frost and snow and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it and the giant's heart melted as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why the spring wouldn't come here. He crept downstairs and opened the front door and went out into the garden. And there's the little boy, the only one who can't reach the branches of the tree. And that area is still winter. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away and, oh, in the garden, the whole garden became winter again. <gasps> Only the little boy did not run for his eyes were so full of tears, he did not see the giant coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree and the tree broke up once into blossom and the birds came and sang in it and the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them round the giant's neck and kissed him. And the other children, when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer, came running back and with them came the spring. And this is the giant as he realises but it's not much fun being selfish because it means you miss out too. 
It is your garden now, little children, said the giant, and he took a great axe and knocked down the wall. <gasps> Look. <laughs> Can you see one of the children's up on his shoulder? And when the people were going to market at 12 o'clock, they found the giant playing with the children. In the most beautiful garden they had ever seen. And that is the end of the story. Look at the fun the children are having and how happy the giant is and how beautiful his garden is. That is the end of the story, The Selfish Giant. Now, have a think about what that was all about. And I'm just going to go and look out of my window and enjoy my garden because it's just starting to show signs of spring. It's not actually my garden, but I can see gardens out there. So I'm going to go and look out and see if I can start to see the little tiny green shoots on the trees where the leaves are going to grow back. But I think I can definitely see them. Have a look out of your window if you can and see if you can see any signs of spring. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.